This third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. When I tell you this is premium, I mean premium. The battery will last 90 minutes so you can take a longer shave. The waterproof technology also allows you to groom in the shower. And one of the coolest features is the LED light, which illuminates grooming areas for a closer, more precise cut. Get 20% off in free shipping with the code Illini at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code Illini. That's I-L-L-I-N-I. Your balls will thank you. What's good, Illini Nation? It's your man in in the middle, Dion Thomas. And as always, I bring you nothing but the very best. And when I say the best, I'm talking about one of the best ever to do it. Not just the best at the University of Illinois, but he's also in the all-century team at Northern Illinois. So who the heck goes from north to south to central and still putting up buckets? Nobody but Flight 33, my man, Kenny Battle. Baby, thank you for joining me today. Oh, no, Dion, it's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure, man. When you're in the, in the presence of, of legends, man, it's, it's unbelievable to see what our university have produced and all the young men and women uh, that come through the university on the athletic side, that is, as well as um, the educational side as well. Oh, no doubt, KB. I'm one of these people, man, I always like to know the why. So you're coming out of West Aurora. Of course, you're there dropping buckets, dunking on people as you do. Why? And how, and then you instead of going to one of the larger schools, um, you, you choose to kind of make a stop at Northern. What, what prompted, say, going to a bigger school and, and choosing to go to Northern instead? Well, you know, uh, Dion, coming out, as you said, I had many opportunities to go big. And... Um, but my family base is very big, which means that's a lot of plane tickets, a lot of travel uh, for my family. So I wanted to keep expenses down. Plus, I wanted to build a brand of my own. Mm -hmm. You know, going to bigger university, bigger university saying that. I wanted to start the battle brand. And I chose Northern because it was 22 miles from home. You know, back then, you put $5 in your car, you can go back and forth. You oh, yeah. know, without any problem, you know, up 88. And it gave me an opportunity to come in with six other freshmen. You know, they called us the Magnificent Seven coming in. And, um, you know, we had guys from Appleton, Wisconsin, Hinkley, Big Rock, uh, DeKalb, Illinois, um, East Aurora, West Aurora. And, you know, we had an opportunity to build, you know, something there. And we did. And it was unbelievable. I had tremendous success as well as the rest of my teammates. And, you know, I build that brand that, you know, you don't have to be in a bit at a big school to be noticed, you know. Very true. Very true. That's a very valid point. And that's one of those things that a lot of young people don't get, don't understand, that you don't necessarily choose the big name. You choose the right fit. And in the right fit, you will flourish. And you did. I mean, man, you, you got it in at Northern, bro. They were in the MAC in the MAC at the time. You were second team all um, all Mid American Conference. You were the youngest. I'm sorry, I said all MAC. Yeah, MAC. And you were the youngest to ever reach a thousand points in the MAC, bro. You had to have been putting up some serious buckets to get to a one thousand that quick. Hey, Dion, I was just you know, give me the ball, get out my way, let me do what I want to do, and I had fun doing it, Dion. I had a great supporting cast. And I was understanding the game every day. Mm -hmm. Every day I, I understood how to score, um, get easy opportunities, uh, making sure that I made all my free throws. Uh, because a lot of people, you know, have a 30 points, but they have eight free throws. Right. You know, you're close to the 40 if you make those eight. So that was my philosophy going in, you know, to, to make sure I made my free throws, get all those offensive putbacks, uh, capitalize on my seals. And I, you know, I call them easy buckets. You know, I might have 30 points, but I had 22 easy buckets, you mm -hmm. know. 
And, and once you start to understanding your network on the floor, and I was having fun doing it. You know, it didn't matter who we was playing, if we was playing DePaul, Wisconsin, Northwestern, you know, Ball State, um, Western Michigan, Ohio, uh, Miami, Ohio. It didn't matter who we were playing. My job was to go out and have fun and, uh, you know, just just do what I do and enjoy doing it. Well, that, that's always one of the keys. And I mean, you hear coaches say, yeah, just go out there and do this, do this. And one of the things that they miss is to have fun. I mean, this is – it's a business when you step up to the collegiate level, but it's still a game at heart. And when you grow up like we did, you know, hooping and all those things, part of the fun is being able to be out there on the floor. I don't know about you. I wasn't, I didn't like practice. I mean, I, I'll do it because I knew it was necessary and I knew it helped me get better. But for me, it was a competition of being on the floor, man. Yeah. Well, you know, practice was my thing because I figured if I could piss my teammates off the day before a game, I knew going into that next game, that they were pissed off at me and everybody that didn't have a Northern Illinois uniform or an Illinois uniform on, they was in trouble because they was already pissed off because I had pissed them off the day before at practice. And, right. you know, you anyone on... That, KB, you, you, you can't say that and not give me a story, man. You, you got to give me one story <laughs> of what you did to piss somebody off now. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I, I, I'll give you two, one at Northern and one at Illinois. At Northern, you know, I come in and, you know, I, I was scoring, and, you know, of course I had a lot of uh, seniors and uh, juniors on the team uh, that was kind of unhappy that, you know, that I was having all this success. So we was at practice, and uh, a buddy of mine today, Jerry Williams, and I was going at it. He was a starting point guard, and we were doing individual drills, and I was beating everybody, and he was the last one, you know, it's kind of like a uh, king of the mountain. And he was the last one, and uh, he came out, and I told him, I said, hey, look, man, ain't no damn ball players coming out of Ohio. You know, he was from Alliance, Ohio. I mean, Buck <laughs> Williams come out of there. And I'm like, uh, hey, ain't no kid from Ohio going to beat me in Illinois. And I beat the crap out of him. I said, hey, you know what? We playing against Ron Hopper and uh, Eric Newsom tomorrow. You got to take it out on Eric, who was a point guard, and also he was from the state of Ohio as well. And he did. He came out and, you know, had a, a fantastic game. And we ended up winning. And it's just, you have to push your teammates, mm-hmm. you know. And I knew the button to just piss everybody off. And I didn't care. Because I figured if you were pissed off at me, then you're going to be really pissed off at your opponent uh, that you played next. And, yeah. you know, in the same at Illinois, I mean, I used to piss off everybody. I was that guy that come to practice. If you was having a bad day, and I knew it, your day was even worse, that I knew you had a bad day. I didn't care. Right. But I knew I was going to get the best out of you. I mean, I used to get on the Kendall skin all the time, Nick, um, Marcus, all of everybody. I didn't care. I was that guy that was so charismatic. I didn't care about you being mad at me because I knew it wasn't going to last, you know, five or ten minutes because right. that's how much love you have for each other. And, you know, they, they look and they be like, man, here go KB with that bullshit. <laughs> and, you know, that's how it was. And they be like, man. And the coaches love it. You know, Coach Henson, uh, Coach Collins, Coach Nagy, uh, Coach McDougal at Northern, they love it to see that a teammate can push another teammate's button and make him respond in a positive way. Well, you, you know, know you can- you, you've coached the same as I have. And that's one of the most important things. When you have your players that can not mm-hmm. just police one another, but that can motivate motivate one another, you know, mm-hmm. when they're out there on the floor. I mean, that's definitely a major thing. Uh, uh, it's a positive for the team. It's a positive for the coaching staff. It, I mean, I, I agree with you. It, I think it just helps everybody all the way around. It does because you, that coach knows that's less he has to say and that you're going to respect your teammates even more than your coach. Not to say you don't respect them, but when it come from one of your peers, you be like, all right, man. Because, you know, I, they I know. I tell my teammates, and man, hey, man, you bullshit, man. Play ball, get get in there and rebound. You know, right. and vice versa. I didn't I didn't mind if my teammates got on. I wanted them to get on me. That way, I can play even harder than I was. Well, you know, most times when when teammates are holding each other accountable, it's like you're saying. It, it it does nothing but add to what you do, who you are. You out there with your brothers anyway. It's a band of brothers. So you know, if your brother's getting on you, you know he's getting on you for the right reason. So I'm sure there was a lot of you know back and forth with you over at Northern Road because. You got bumped to All-American status, not just in oh, 85, yeah. but All-American status in 86. 
And then you transfer to the University of Illinois. I got to ask what, what prompted, and I'm sure, you know, Illini Nation wants to know what prompted the transfer, especially since you were doing your thing um, at the MAC level. Well, you know what, um, when that process came up, when I was leaving New Orleans and everyone, you know, um, I love the media. I love, I love them to death because they were like, where's he going? Where's he, can he play here? Can he play at Illinois? He's not a big 10 player. He's not a big East player. He's not big enough. He's not strong enough. And I love when they write stuff because I make them eat their words. And, uh, you know, I remember when I was thinking about coming to Illinois and Lawrence Tate, a good friend of mine, wrote an article. Well, you know, he, he, he did all these things in the Mac. Uh, he, he's not that big. He can't do that in the Big Ten. He, he's not going to be able to help anymore. And I just looked at it, read it, and laughed. I'm like, wow. This guy really don't know me. You know, I said, but yet I've been proving people wrong my entire life. Why should I stop now? And, you know, what people fail to realize, when I was at Northern, we played DePaul. They was ranked uh, in the top three in the country uh, my freshman year. Uh, we played Northwestern, the Big Ten, who was pretty good back then. We played Wisconsin, Marquette. You know, Miami, Ohio, they had Ron Harper. Uh, uh, Ball State, they had Dan uh, Palombizio. Right. You know, uh, 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 Booker James and uh, Western Michigan. All these guys are NBA players. Went on to the NBA. John Long from Eastern Michigan. So I was already playing against uh, uh, future pros as a freshman. And uh, when I got to Illinois, I, you know, I played against uh, Long, you know, in the Pontiac tournament. Uh, Larry in the Pontiac tournament. Uh, Steve in the Pontiac tournament, I seen Kendall play. I knew about Marcus and I knew about Nick when he left Proctor to go to Simeon. So I knew all these guys and we all played against each other in the Perry State game. That's what people didn't realize. Yep. We saw all those guys, not only Illinois guys, but all other Big Ten guys that were from the state of Illinois because the Perry State game was our Illinois Olympics. You know, oh, you yeah. look forward to the summer playing because you knew you were going to play against the best players from throughout the state of Illinois. No doubt. I, I agree with you 100%. I wish they still had the Prairie State games because I, I, I absolutely loved it. I mean, I didn't oh, yeah. play every year, every summer, um, mm -hmm. but I, I absolutely love just that competition. And you're right. And I think there's another thing that the media, um, especially guys or writers or, or journalists that haven't played, don't understand. There's one thing that you can't measure. I mean, one, you had all of the physical attributes. I mean, you jumped out the gym. You played with a motor that not very many people play with. You had a dogged uh, determination, as you mentioned. People tell you you can't do something. It makes you want to run through a wall and do it. But there's one thing that you can't measure, um, and this is especially in this day of analytics, you can't measure somebody's heart and, and how big the dog is. In it. Yeah, that's it. And that's the one thing, you know, my, my grandfather and mother always told me, let a sleeping dog lay. When you, when you wake him up, you better be ready for the fight. <laughs> you know, it's definitely going to be a fight. <laughs> but uh, that, that's actually great because you're 100% right on that, bro. So you get to Illinois. And how, how was it, you know, just walking in? Again, as you mentioned, that, that team had some dogs on it. It had some high-level guys on there. Oh, yeah. um, and, and guys that you had played against that you had already known. How, how was that um, coming together and, and looking at that team when you guys stepped on the floor in, in that first practice? Oh, buddy, yeah, not even the first practice, because I know y'all probably, y'all hooped over at Empey the same as I did. Oh, yeah. How, how was it walking on that court with those guys? Well, you know what? It's a lot of guys on that team left Empey every night pissed off. Uh -huh. I'm talking about pissed off to the highs of festivity because – <laughs> Empy was where uh, all the girls was at, all the athletes, football, all the athletes was at Empy. Yep. So if you got your ass busted at Empy, everybody <laughs> in, on campus knew about it by the time you went to camps that night. You know, everybody was like, damn, man, someone so dunked on you like this. And, was, and I was the kind of guy, I dunk on you and talk shit while I'm dunking the ball before it even goes through the net. So I'm, I'm really going to piss you off. And, you know, and, and we just, but it made everyone accountable and made everyone new. When you walk through that door and empty, you had to have your A game. Because then you know if you lost that first game, you might not get back on the court to the end when everybody was leaving. 
So, you know, it was important to pick your five players that you was with that you felt had a better, good chance of winning. And, I mean, the football team had some players. I mean, Howard Griffin, Mel Agee, Frank Harley, you know, um, uh, Quinn. Uh, I mean, they had a bunch of players that were uh, high school basketball players that played football. They don't want, And, I mean, we was loaded. So, you know, they would talk stuff and we bust their ass and they'd be like, oh, let's go out on the football field. And we'd be like, hey, we can go on the football field too. You know, but that's how much love we had for each other and we competed every day. And and they knew coming in, you know, like I told the guys when I got there, I said, hey, man, everybody in this room was uh, McDonald's All-American or, or Census All-American. I said, that don't mean shit. I said, we got to come out and play every day because I'm going to tell y'all to y'all face. I'm going to bust y'all ass every day. I don't care what what your status is, what you came out. You can be the number one player in Illinois coming out of high school. I said, that don't mean shit to me. I'm going to bust your ass. I said, you're going to know who I am. So all that media talk and all that glamour you receive, that don't mean nothing. You're going to have to show me every day that you can live up to that status. You know? And I think that's what made us so much better because everyone competed. They wanted to prove to each other that, you know, I can do this, I can do that. I'm good at this, I'm good at that. Right. Well, you know, I think that's one of the, the great things from definitely from our era um, was the pride factor. And, and not, to, not to put down anything with these guys um, playing today, but everyone wants to be, and when you watch the games today, even when I was coaching, I couldn't understand how guys wanted to be friends and how they could shake hands and talk to guys out there on the court. I couldn't do it, KB. I, I couldn't do it. And I mean, it's funny you said that. And you'll know that even when we was in Ippy, even though we were cool, of course, with everybody on our team, with everybody on the football team, man, it, it almost got some rough and tumble going on in there simply because of the competitive nature. Yeah, I remember we was playing at the University of Tennessee in Champaign, and this uh, guy ran into me and I knocked him on the floor. And Steve Bardo went to pick him up. And I told him, I said, Steve, if you pick his ass up, I'm going to knock you down there with him. <laughs> and the dude looked at Steve and said, he said, damn, man, battle crazy. And Steve like, yeah. He, <laughs> you know, but that's just a competitive mix. I, and I told him, I said, man, he's like, he said, KB, you know, later on, he's like, KB, you right, man. I said, there's a reason he was on the ground. I put him there. You right. know, and uh, you know, but uh, that's how it is, man. You, you got to be willing to compete. And like you said, uh, these kids today, not to take anything against them, but you know, they don't know nothing about men like Paul, they don't know nothing about Washington Paul, you know, they don't know nothing about IT, Malcolm X, Chicago State for the Pro Am, and all they don't, they don't, they didn't get the experience. Man. And, uh, and, and, and that's where the toughness really came in because you know, you played up most of the guys you played against was older. Older yep. legends from Chicago, professional athletes from Chicago, you know, and uh, you had to you had to bring it. Because if you didn't bring it, the fans let you know that you suck. Ooh, you know, they, man, they, they, you know how it is. They would ride Ooh. you, man. If you if you, you know, not at IIT or playing in one of the <laughs> play, yeah, you ain't got to be at IIT. My, my man will hit you in the gym. And if you yeah. didn't come out there and perform, you oh, knew yeah. you were getting embarrassed. And yeah. everybody yeah. was going to be on. And I, I remember my first time playing up there in uh, IIT, man. I uh, come in and uh, Jimmy, that's his name, Jimmy in the gym. And he'd be yep. like, fresh, fresh off of 88, Northern Illinois great. Kenny Ballard, and everybody in there, they had heard of it, they hadn't seen it. And they were like, I don't even know, who is that? And then once I start playing and dunking, and Jim, Jimmy got more excited than, than anybody. And they were like, oh, shit, this guy's jumping out the gym over everybody, dunking everything, killing, you know, just having fun. And I I, I became a favorite. They were like, man, this, this guy can play. They were like, damn, no wonder. And they said, we heard him because, you know, I played a lot of the Chicago school. Right. And, and, and they heard that the name, but no, no one had ever seen me play. And they were like, oh, shit, this man, he's crazy. <laughs> you know, and you know, and you had to talk stuff. And I was like one of those guys. I, I guess I was born talking stuff to the doctor when he slapped me on my ass <laughs> as a baby, and I, I think I slapped his back. But you know, <laughs> you know. But I was like, "Hey, man, that, that was my nature. That was my my fuel, you know, to the fire, man. Yeah, uh, not only be able to talk a lot of stuff, but also back it up, man. 
Well, I heard that big dog. Well, you got to be able to back it up if you're going to talk it. And, and you did that. That that first year when y'all came in, man, y'all had a heck of a run. You know, had a heck of a run. Not like 89, of course, but y'all had a heck of a run. Tell about that first experience that you had. You know, of course, you mentioned playing against some Big Ten team, but playing a whole Big Ten schedule. Because, you know, I, I know for me, uh, you know, I hated playing against Michigan State. I hated playing against Purdue. You know, not necessarily because they – because from when I came in as a freshman, I didn't mm-hmm. understand what it was about to pay those guys. Now, you came mm-hmm. in as a transfer, of course, you had played against some of those teams and some of those guys. What was that first year like for you during that Big Ten season? Well, you know, I, uh, I you know when I transferred in, I had a chance to watch all the Big Ten home games. And I saw um, that, you know, I didn't like nobody. I didn't like no team in the Big Ten outside of Illinois. That was, that was my thing. So if you didn't have a Illinois, it didn't matter if you were Northwestern, Indiana, Iowa, Purdue, Minnesota. I'm, I'm coming to bust your ass. You yeah. know, I'm trying to. I had a dislike for – I mean, I liked the guy. I knew all the guys on all the team. We all played in uh, some form of a tournament uh, prior to going into high school, you know. And so I knew him. So I'm like, hey, man, you know, I'm going to shake your hand now, but I'm going to kick your ass when that ball go up in there. And, you know, that was my motto, you know. And nothing against any other teams. I just – I was pumped up to play against anybody from the Big Ten on our schedule because I wanted to prove that, okay – He's from the Mac, but you know I can fit in. After about three or four games, they were like, "Oh, he's for real. Oh, he fits in nicely." You know, and like you stated earlier, you know they can measure that I was only two hundred ten pounds. You know, six six, jump out of the gym, but they couldn't measure the, the the strength and desire in my heart. You know, that's that's the part they can't see on the outside. You know? uh, that's the part that can't be measured. That's why when I talk to people about analytics, I'm like, man. There's one thing you can't measure, and that's the dog that's in this fight. So yep. you, you can never, mm-hmm. you know, you can't tell me that numbers match up to those other things. I mean, because you played, I mean, they have you listed as a small forward. But, bro, you mm-hmm. played all over the court. I mean, you defended centers. You defended guards. I mean, there was no position for you. And, you know, and that leads me to another, that leads me to another thing. You know, because nowadays you hear people talk about, yeah, positionless basketball, positionless basketball. I'm like, man. I'm like, that line of line that team started the idea of positionless basketball. And, and you know, the good thing about that, uh, we could switch on any screen and not move a bit. You know, we could switch anyone in and out. It didn't matter. We could switch. We could double team. I mean, we was quick to rotate back to the ball. And, I mean, you know, even though we didn't have that, that big guy that was dominant in the middle, Lowell Hamilton did an unbelievable job, you know, to be six seven four. You know, long, very athletic, jumped out of the gym, block shot, alter shot, you know. And uh, when you have guys that that was all on that team, nearly the same size, uh, Marcus maybe six eight, but you know, and and I tell people, I said we didn't need a center. You know, we had guys that can guard center, can guard point guards, and I loved it when I was next up on point guard. Because I would always rip them and steal the ball. They were like, damn, this dude, not only is he quick, but he got long. And it was just all about anticipation, along with all those other attributes. So it, it was great. I love teams coming in and saying, oh, man, they ain't got no center. We from the dogs, them on the post. No, you ain't. Because we got weak side help that's pinning that on the glass. You oh, know, yeah. blocking it when you throw that jump hook. You're like, where he come from? You know. But that we everyone had each other's back, man. And, and I think that's what made us so great that we didn't care. You know, it wasn't about scoring. You know, Nick and I, you know, we scored a lot. Kendall did. Everybody scored. We didn't care. Like yeah. I said, I said, I don't care if I don't score any point. As long as we win. And I have, you know, I might get some steals. I'm going to take some charges. I'm going to have some rebounds. You know, I said, the point's going to come. But when y'all needed me to, to score, oh, I was scoring. You know, when I got the ball, I was going. You know, like the uh, final four, the last game, Coach Coach uh, Coach Henson told him, he said, "Hey, every trip down, we going to back." And I said, "Hey, they not gonna stop me. Get me the ball." And you know, and they had that much confidence. They said, "I got you, KB. I got you. Where you wanted it? Up top. I said, just get it to me. It don't matter." I said, "Going through the bucket." And you know, that's that's when you know your team. You know. 
have that confidence that we can get the ball to anyone at any time and they'll produce for us. Right. You know? Well, I, I tell you, you know, and, and you, you and I have had this discussion before. That, that 89 team is one of the reasons I ended up at Illinois. Um, I, I can't tell about the night at the party. Um, oh, no. They, they don't, don't need to know that. Yeah. They don't need to know that. <laughs> but that, that was another reason I, I ended up in Illinois. And, and a large portion of that, a large portion of that was you, man. And, and watching you play, and then, of course, Nick and Irvin coming from Simeon, wanting to follow my big brothers, and being able to watch you guys, man. But you come in, you go co-MVP for the team that first year. Third team, all Big Ten, coming up out the MAC when people question your size and all of this other stuff. And then you roll into 88-89 season. Now, I'll tell anyone, and, and, and people might think I'm biased, this 89 team is the best Illinois team I've ever seen. And one of the best teams in college basketball that I've ever seen. I don't think it would have mattered who you guys played against. You know, whether you go back to the, the, the and I'm even throw, you know, uh, I'm even throw that North Carolina team in there. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, they got some Hall of Famers on there. They got some guys. That, but you guys were like straight dogs. And they became Hall of Famers when they got to the NBA. They weren't Hall of Famers in college, um, Illini Nation. So understand what I'm talking about. I'm comparing mm -hmm. college players to college players. That, that team, that Georgetown team, the North Carolina State team, I mean, even the, the, the you know, Larry Johnson and them out in UNLV. Uh, KB, yeah. you, the camera went off. But yeah. even out there in the UNLV, I think you guys match any of those teams simply because of your size. I mean, your starting point guard is 6'5". Mm -hmm. you know, you're 6'5", 6 6'6", 6 6 6 6 at your center position. So all the P.J. Bowman was the shortest person on the team. But mm -hmm. one of the toughest dudes on the team. So it didn't matter who was who he was guarding, he was gonna be all up in him anyway, right? Yeah, and he knew he had help because you know, I tell him, I say, ain't nobody gonna take advantage of nobody on my team. So I got your help. I can I can uh help them recover quicker than anyone. So they always knew if you got beat, I was gonna be someone, you know, at the end, you know, to, to help out. And that's and that's what made us so good that we knew. If, if you beat somebody, you was gonna get. Um, you had help, you know, on the weak side, and you know, if somebody get past you, you gonna run behind them and poke the ball away. You're gonna get a steal, and and we just had that, you know, that nick to know that hey, it don't matter, man. You know, it don't matter. We we all got each other's back, and 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 the coaches knew it. You know, uh, all the t players on the team knew it. You know, right. it, ain't nobody gonna get you know embarrassed out here. Cause, you know, you know your teammates got your back, you know, and that's what, and like you said, that's what made us so good that that we didn't care about who we was playing on that other team. There was those five guys on the court and that, uh, the bench players that were coming in. That's all that mattered to us. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, and this team was so fast, man. It's so mm -hmm. athletic. You know, you had so many. They couldn't key on one person, like you said. You know, you may be the the, the go to guy this at this moment. Nick could be the go-to guy. Kendall could be the go-to guy. Then you bring Marcus in, and Marcus doing his thing. You know, there, there was no, you know, who do you put at the top of your scouting report, you know, when you were coach? That's the crazy thing. Yeah, because, I mean, you can you can design and say, okay, well, we're going to stop throwing that. Okay. And you got four other players, and then you got another player coming off the bench. How are you going to stop them five? You know, and, and that's how we looked at it. You know, you're not going to stop one player. You might double team, but that, somebody else going to get out. Kendall going to hit from the outside. You know, Lowe going to come down the middle and dunk it on people. I'm going to get a tip down. You know, Nick going to power up. It, it didn't matter. You was at a mismatch uh, defensively trying to guard him. And offensively, we didn't care because we know we're going to press, we're going to trap, we're going to make you put the ball on the floor, pick it up. And now when you pick that ball up, you know, I tell them, I said, we can come both of them. You know, it, 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 it's your time. Because when you make that little long pass across the court, <laughs> oh, we, every, every, you got four guys running for one ball. Because everybody knows whoever gets it first, they finish they put on the show. Oh, yeah. And, and, and we press the people all the time to make that one. And when you don't give them an out and you know that's the only pass they can make, oh, man, that's, that's, that's lovely. And, and I love it. 
you know, we, we would set you up left and right. And, and that was one of the things that, you know, I thought, you know, a lot of people, you know, you've heard the same comments I have about, you know, co coach not being a great coach and so forth mm -hmm. and so on, which I think is absolutely absurd. Yeah. But when you watch his coaching job before you guys, and then you see the total shift mm -hmm. in, you know, not just what he did offensively, but what he did defensively to fit that eight or nine great athletes and great players mm -hmm. that was on that 89 team. You know, just tell a little bit about your time with Coach Henson, what you saw when you were there and what you saw while you were part of that, that 89 team. Well, I knew uh, coming in, Coach knew about me. He tried to get me in before I went to Northern. And he came in, and I, I remember the first practice I had uh, when Kenny Norman and Doug, those guys were seniors and uh, wide seniors. And I come in, and I just destroyed practice. I mean, I turn it out. And, you know, me and Snake is going at it, you know, back and forth and talking stuff. You know, that west side coming out of him, that west side of Roar coming out of me. And uh, But me and Snake were friends prior to that. And, I mean, we were both competitive. And he'll tell you today that I made him work hard every single practice. And, you know, coming in and coach is like, wow, this guy got two years of this guy to play? And, you know, Coach and I never had a – we had one disagreement, and that's because I missed the dunk. And then he started yelling at me, and that pissed me off. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Coach Collin had to calm him down. But I told him, I said, man, I ain't going back in. Forget it. I sit over here on the bench. You want me on the bench? I'm going to sit over here. And, you know, Coach <laughs> Collin and I, we were playing Wisconsin. And uh, we was up 10, and then Wisconsin go on a 14-0 run. And, you know, all of a sudden, hey, kid. Hey, Ken, and I'm ignoring Coach Henson, and he called me about four or five times, and then the players are calling me. I said, man, I ain't going in, man. Forget that. And then Coach C walks down, and, you know, um, he make one of the walk-on moves and sit next to me, put those big arms on me, and he said, Batman, we need you. I said, Coach, man, I'm not going in, man. He don't want me out there. I ain't playing. And then he looked at me in the eyes. He said, hey, Batman, I need you, man. I need you. And I said, Coach, the only reason I'm going back in is because of you. Not because of him, and I walk past Coach Henson, and he's saying stuff, and I don't. At that point, I'm, I don't hear nothing. I go in the game, and we go on a 20 0 run, and that was that was the only time he and I ever had any kind of disagreement. And the point was, he wasn't mad at me for missing the dunk. He was mad because he said, "Well, what you just did, I got 13, 14 other players gonna try to do the same thing you do because you're the leader." And that was his point. But at that point, I was. I was mad because I missed it. Then I was mad because he took me out. And then third, he was yelling at me. And I'm like, Coach Hill, I already know I missed the dunk. Everybody that sent me home know I missed the damn dunk. You ain't got to show me off. But his point was he and I met right before we went to the media. And he was like, well, you know, Kenny, um, the players all look up to you. They want to do what you do. And he said, I can't have them doing that. He said, I know you can make it. He said, but I don't want them to try something they can't make. And I said, Coach, you know what? You're right. I understand. I apologize. We went into the media. And the first question out of all the media to him and myself, what were y'all yelling at each other about? What was the conversation about? I saw nothing. He just told me he loved me. I told him I loved him. You know, and that was it. But, uh, I mean, I had the most respect for Coach. Uh, and, you know, people said, man, if y'all had a different coach, uh, you guys probably would have won. I said, no, it wasn't the coaches. Uh, I said, he prepared us for the two years I played for him, offensively and defense. I mean, this guy was a wizard, a beyond wizard. Yes. I mean, he could give you a defensive plan, and all of a sudden, you, you beat a team by 20 that, you know, you're not even supposed to beat. And they, they're looking at the box scores, you know, Nick got 28, I got 30, uh, Kendall got 21, Lowe got 19. And it's all those points came out of our defensive scheme. You know, we scored it, but our defense – uh, that he set us in, you know, was, was the point. I mean, Coach, Coach was a wizard. And I told people, prior to him, uh, you know, getting into the Hall of Fame, and I said, hey, man, this this, this is one of the greatest coaches um, in college basketball that doesn't get the recognition he deserves. You, you, know? you and I have both had very similar conversations with people. Uh, as a matter of fact, today I was on um, someone else's podcast earlier, and they asked me that very thing. What, what was it about, you know, your, your time at Illinois? And I'm not sure you will agree with this. 
Mm-hmm. Told him, Coach Henson is one of the best coaches I've ever played for. And, you know, and that's, and, you know, I went on to play 14 years professionally and no, none of them could hold a candle uh, to coach. One, we were always prepared. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter who we played, we were prepared defensively. And you know this, and I know what you're going to say when I say this. When the teams would come up, whether they signal with their hands or they called out a play, we started calling out their players because we knew every single thing that they were going to do. <laughs> yes. I mean, he made sure, and, and like you stated, you were prepared for anything the other team was going to throw in. You went through it in practice. You, you ran the scout team, ran it. And you knew when they came up, whether they, like you said, they call out a play, a number, a name, whatever it was, you was like, oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. And, and team was like, man, I remember mean, we were playing Indiana. And uh, Jay Edwards was like, Coach, they know all our plays. <laughs> 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 and his reply back to Jay, he's like, and that's a damn thing, because they running it better than y'all are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. That, that yeah. doesn't surprise me, because we, we, you know, the same thing. I mean, we'd be telling God, they come up and call their plays, we start yelling out their plays, and would jump and know exactly what they were going to do. <laughs> And that's part of being a coach. And also being a coach is like you said, you had one disagreement with, with coach. I had one. And, and my <laughs> four years, and my four years that was I was there. And just like you, it was Coach Collins, Coach C that came <laughs> down and was like uh big junior. We we need you to get back in there and do what you gotta do. I'm like, uh-huh. but coach, I'm like, I'm getting yelled at for something that wasn't my fault, you know. Uh-huh. And and like you, and this is what I told them on the other podcast. Coach will get on you. He never mm-hmm. used curse words, but he would get on you. And afterwards, there was always an explanation of why yep. he got on mm-hmm. you. And it was normally, mm-hmm. as you said, because he wanted you to do and be better. Yep, that was it. That was it, 100%. You know, so yeah. that, that 89 team, man, like I said, was one of my faves. As you guys are rolling through the season, and I mean rolling, I mean you guys were putting it on people. You had some 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 buzzer beaters, of course, with Nick's shot and some others, some buzzer beaters down in. And then you get to the NCAA tournament. What what was the thought process going into the tournament um, when you guys got there? Well, our process was, you know, we lost to uh, Villanova the year before. Uh, we had a big lead, and we missed a bunch of free throws. And uh, before that first game against Ball State down in Indianapolis, you know, we were like, hey, man, we don't want to keep nothing close. You know, we don't want to chance nothing. Let's do what we have to do. Let everybody else get, get their playing time so we can rest because we got another game coming up, you know, in a day or so. And that was our model. Go out, compete, play hard, do, do your job. So when it came down to it, Nobody had to worry about you making a free throw, hitting the basket. You know, it, it would never come to that because we were playing so hard and we had such a, a good lead, you know. And um, everybody, you know, they they knew what we were going to do. You know, it's like we had already played the game. We were just finalizing it. Right. And, you know, so, and then, uh, I mean, they we was prepared, man. We were mentally prepared. Uh, to play the tournament and start at the first tournament game up in Indiana. So you, you beat the bricks off of Michigan two times during the season. And we fall short um, in, in that in that game. What's your thoughts? Um, and I know, you know, of course, everybody's devastated during the game and after the game. But what's, mm-hmm. what's your thought process when it came to the fact that it was the end? That was That was the end of college basketball for you. Well, you know what? It wasn't, uh, you know, the loss didn't hurt me. What hurt me was knowing that I would never be able to put on a University of Illinois uniform at that point, after that game. And, uh, you know, as, as I told in my uh, statement to the guys afterwards, you know, I'm going to miss playing with y'all. But you guys got an opportunity to get back here next year. Uh, the same way you had new additions coming in and this here and that. And I said, hey, one game don't determine who we are. You know, we didn't win. We won the champion, but this one game is not going to define who the 89 team is. I said, our love for each other, our coaching staff, our families. I said, that always live on. I said, we just didn't get the job done, and that's it. 
Yeah, I, I second I second that feeling of, of at the end of not being able to put that jersey on, bro. But yeah. you walk out of there, of course, with a lot of individual honors, second team all Big Ten, uh, honorable mention all American. You know, you 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 have a great college career, both at uh, Northern and then an even bigger and bolder and, and more exciting college career at Illinois. First round draft pick, number 27. So you get in there. The league is different. Of course, we, we all got to learn things as we move up every level. It's, it's a little bit different. You got to learn. How was draft night for you? And well, you know what? How was I, chose, I chose not to go to New York uh, for draft night. I wanted to stay home and be with my family because I said, you know, this is a family time. It's not about me. It's about us as a family. So I stayed home with my family, and, and it was, I mean, it was exciting, you know, uh, because, you know, they project you to go at this point, this point, and when you get to those numbers and you see yourself not going, and, uh, and my, my mom is sitting over there, and it was like, oh, they're going to call your name, baby. Don't, don't worry about it. I said, no, I ain't worried about it. I said, oh, all those teams that didn't pick me better worry about it, but the team <laughs> that do pick me, you know, and uh, – you know, and every time I played those teams my first year, everybody that skipped me. And uh, in Chicago, Doug Collin was the coach. Mm -hmm. well, well, Doug Collin wanted to take me early, but Jerry Krause uh, didn't allow him to do it. And, you know, uh, Doug and I, we, we, we were friends today, and he was like, Kenny, I told him, that's the worst mistake we, didn't, we ever made of not getting you. Because you could have added a whole lot. And I remember we played uh, Chicago, uh, and I, I put it on the air. <laughs> I put it on. <laughs> and then Doug, Doug told him, that's why he should have been here, you know. And the same with Detroit, who, who drafted me but yet traded me. Every time we went to Detroit, I made sure we beat Detroit, in Detroit and in Phoenix, you know. And, and they knew. Uh, but, you know, I, I, love, I love the Dion. It was, it was one of the – Greatest feeling to, uh, you know, to be out on your own as a professional, you know, growing up, that's what you dream about, uh, playing in the pros. And to have that opportunity, uh, you know, to play those 82 games my, my first year out, it was, it was unbelievable. And, I, you know, the good thing, I went to a veteran team. I went to a team that had former Illinois player, Eddie Johnson, uh, you know, who was a mentor for me, you know, told me the do's and don'ts, you know, of the NBA. Uh, and how to prepare and all of that. And, you know, it was great that I had those, that leadership from Eddie, uh, Kevin Johnson, Tom Chambers, you know, uh, Jeff Hornacek. I had played against Dan Marley from uh, Central, uh, Central Michigan, so I knew Dan very well. So uh, it, it was a great experience coming in. And, and they soon found out that they were like, man, this dude crazy, man. You know, <laughs> when they uh, – and, and all those guys will tell you, uh, you know, the, the rookie stuff they were doing, uh -huh. it, it didn't apply to me because I was one of those, I was, you know, they always say, Cotton uh, Cotton Center may he rest in peace. He's like, yeah, that's one Rick, that's one rook y'all ain't gonna mess with because they knew I was a rook, you know, and I remember Kevin Johnson being like, uh, yeah, KB, I need, you know, some, some donuts and coffee uh, by my room tomorrow before practice. And I told him, I said, I, I hope she's waiting on it. You know, it ain't going to ever come, you know. And uh, I had, good thing, I had four other rookies under me that was, you know, second round. Mm -hmm. And I said, y'all been talking, they ain't first round. Y'all talk to the, those rookies. And they always, the rookies always said, why y'all don't make KB do nothing? Why y'all don't have KB do this and do that? And I'd be like, and I told you, I said, when we leave this court, I'm whooping all y'all ass. And, you know, they, they, they would get the, uh, uh, Cotton would say, uh, Rook so and so get the get all the balls and all the vets would go get the balls and throw them all over the gym. They would be kicking them and I'm like, I'll do that shit when I it's my turn. It's gonna be some problems when we get in that locker room, you know. And uh, but, but you know I, I love the Dion. I, I love all the years I played, all the team I played for, the teammates, and I you know I'm friends with all the ones that are still living today on all those teams. You know, they'll call me up. You know, I can call the chief up in Boston. And the first thing he say, young fella, you crazy motherfucker. <laughs> That's the first thing the chief would say. 
you know, and uh, because, you know, I, I was that guy that I was going to do my job. I was not, wasn't going to bring any change to any team I played for, the organization or my family. And I, I was just happy and blessed to be where I was at. And, and I wasn't going to mess it up for nothing in the world. So, and that was one, and, and I think that's one of the things I respect. Now, I will say this, I, I had to get coffee and donuts. So I, I, don't, I don't know how you got out of that one because, you know, <laughs> I had to go get coffee and donuts. So I, I, I should have called you and figured out how the hell to get the hell out of getting coffee and donuts, bro. But I say this, you know, you, you with your game, I, I thought after, of course, spending 14 years over in Europe, you, you only went there for a very short time. Why, why didn't you, why didn't you, I mean, because you, you got the NBA, did the CBA. Why didn't you, you know, extend your career and, and go and play in Europe? Uh, well, you know what, dear, I, I ended up getting married. And um, I remember uh, Kenny Jr. Uh, was just born, he was born in January. Um, January 26th, and I had a game the 28th, and I was on a four-day trip, five-day trip. And when I got back home uh, and was playing with him, he was looking at me as if he had never seen me in his life. And that feeling at that point told me that you got to be the father to your kid and raise your kid. And at that point, I was like, you know what? I was going to be a father every day and coming home and have to get to know my, my kids uh, once I get back. And I wanted to spend that early time without, with my kids, and uh, it worked out wonderful. You know, I'm, I'm happy I wouldn't, I wouldn't give it up for 10 or uh, 20 years in the league, you know, uh, 20 years raising my kids. Uh, I'll say this. That answer, actually, knowing you, and Illini Nation, if you don't know him, you, you, you will hear it right now. Knowing you, that's not a surprise to me that you would put your career on hold for your family. I mean, oh, you, yeah. I remember walking through, I think we bumped into each other in Walmart and your, your kids were still in high school at the time mm -hmm. and just how close, and your wife was with you, and just how close you guys looked as a family. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They, they know, even today, my daughter is at uh, University of Delaware and she, she's tearing up the CAA. And I have a son that's playing football at Northern and another one that will be playing basketball there. And uh, um, Kendall, he's out at Kiswaki College. And they, they continue to play. And I tell you, Dion, every game I see, uh, see them play, and I'll be like, wow, man. Now I know how my mother felt watching me play, you know. And uh, I had the uh, chance to they play with me on my AU with KD Hoop. Uh, even my daughter played with the boys, uh, mm -hmm. and that's why she's so tough now. And, uh, you know, she's averaging a double-double, seven out of eight games she's had a double-double. Uh, and, you know, she's she doing – when I see her play, I see myself. And uh, she know after the game, any little mistakes she made, I don't care about the good stuff you did because you're supposed to do that. Right. But, you know, I, I sent her a text, said, great game, baby girl. Uh, you got to make these free throws. You got to finish those late, you know. I'll, I'll put my stuff and she'll me fly back. Thanks, Dad. Love you. And this and that. And she know I'm. I'm. I, mean, I told all my kids, you know, when they were growing up, I said I will always be your most critical coach. I said other coaches gonna love what you do. I said, but I would always be critical of all the things you should be doing, not what you're doing. Right. You know. So, and it makes them better. It makes them hold their own accountability. Well, you know, like I know. And this is, and I think this comes from our uh, our time and our coaches. It, it didn't matter what you did good, like you said. You, you're yeah. suspect, you're expected to do those things that are good. Yeah. So let me point out the things that you need to work on because that's what's going to make you a better player. Exactly, exactly. And and they understand, and and I love it. I said, well, good. You, you're understanding that you got to take the criticism and make everything better. You have the whole – I said, don't have half a game. Don't be an offensive player. I said, why can't, if you're a great offensive player, why you can't be a great defensive player? Right. Because if you put that same effort in scoring, then stopping someone else from scoring, you know, it, it'll show. And I used to love telling people that. I, I love it. I'm like, hey, you, you ain't scoring today. Maybe tomorrow when you play Wisconsin, you get your bucket. But you ain't getting nothing today, you know. 
Uh, he's all that set down because you, you ain't scoring on me. You know, and I, and I took it personally. If somebody scored on me, I don't care how they scored. I'd be like, okay, next time you score, it, it'll be next year on me, you know. And, you know, when, when you take stuff personal, hold yourself accountable, hold your teammates accountable, and you see nothing but success. You know, you see nothing but success. So you, you, you hang up the shoes, you coach your kids, you get them off in, the, in, in an off into college, and you have the last one about to get ready to go to college. So that means you and your wife did a great job. We got four young black people heading off to college. That's amazing within itself. And the reason oh, I yeah. point that out is you're doing a lot of great things right now socially. Mm-hmm. Tell a little bit, I mean, tell everyone what you're doing, because I don't think you, you, you mm-hmm. you've never been, even with all the high flying dunks and the attitude and the grit and the fight, you've never really been one to just be like, this is what I'm doing. So oh, I, yeah. I want you to tell the Line Eye Nation all of the good things that you're doing, because I already told him the Line Eye Nation, as soon as he get things up and running, call me because I'm going to help. But yeah. go, go ahead, KB. I'm going to give you the mic for me. I have a, I have a, we have a program out in the South Suburbs called uh, Game On, and it's a program that started with uh, getting our young young people, college people, high school people of age, uh, aware of the voting rights and the, the responsibility of them to get out and vote, to have a voice, have a choice, and uh, utilize it. And we started that uh, uh, back in October, uh, and we had our first event that went uh, was off the charts. Uh, Kendall Bill came out. Um, uh, three other uh, uh, informed NBA players came out, uh, as well as professional boxer. And the event was, I mean, it was, went through the roof. And also associated with that, uh, we were um, uh, letting the community stop in the south suburbs aware of the COVID, uh, prevention of COVID. We have a panel of uh, about four to five to six uh, doctors that are specialists and uh, to talk to people about it, prevention. And also uh, we just uh, started talking to them about the vaccine and importance of being vaccinated uh, and, and, and letting them know, uh, you know, their insecurity of, of receiving a vac- uh, vaccine and how important it is to become vaccinated. And uh, and all of this is partnered with my youth organization, KB Hoop. And uh, we're also, we're building, uh, I have two new buildings coming up, one in the South Suburbs and one here in Aurora, uh, my hometown, uh, will be the KB Hoop uh, youth organization. And it's gonna be huge. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of things in there to offer uh, the community, uh, especially um, African-American and our Latino community. Uh, and uh, I can't give away too much right now, Dion, but you know I've already invited you in, and uh, we got we got a lot of other avenues that, that is off the chart that uh, haven't been done, and, uh, you know, when they come out, it's going to really, really help uh, Chicago, Chicago land, West suburbs out here where I'm at, uh, and the state of Illinois. It is going to be huge. It's going to be off the chart. And I definitely will keep uh, everyone informed. Uh, once we have our next uh, big me- uh, Zoom meeting, um, I definitely I'll let you know, and you can get it out uh, to the Line Nine Nation as well as the people all of them, because this is going to be something huge uh, once it comes all forward. Right here again, it goes right back to you being a family person, caring about people, pulling your teammates together, and here you are now. You're pulling the community together. I mean, and then, and you know, like I know, it's so important in the black and brown communities to have those opportunities, to have the support, to have the knowledge, you know, as you talk about with the vaccine, because I can tell you right now, I can't wait till they call me. I might, oh, yeah. not, be, I might not be able to run over there fast enough. We can get someone back to the world, to the real world. And I tell people all the time, I say, what other vaccine has ever been produced that has a 94 to 95% chance of affecting it. I said, you go out and get the flu shot and it's only seven to 8% affected. But you go out and get it every year, but you don't want to take something that's 95% affected? I said, I don't get it. With less side effects, 
you know, to uh, minimal to none. And um, but you're saving not only yourself, your family, your community, um, and and so forth and on. You know, and uh, I had this conversation with my mom, and she was doubtful until I started explaining to her. And I said, "Okay, mom, uh, you know that's your choice." I said, "My choice is for you to have it." Right. You know, I, and uh, you know, she's like, "Well, if I get it, then I'll get the uh, vaccine." I said, "Well, it's not going to work. It's too late." And she was like, told me this morning, her and I talked, and she was like, yeah, I'm calling my doctor. I'm going to uh, make sure that uh, she puts me on the list uh, to receive. And I said, okay, mom. I said, I knew you You were thinking. I said, I know you're real smart, so you were just thinking it. And, and now you're like, okay, he's right. You know, because I told her, I said, we only got one mom. You know, you, go. and, you know, I said, I can't get another one. And especially, I said, when it's your time to go, I know. I said, but if it's because of this and you refuse to get that, and I said, now you're going to put more pressure on me and my brothers and sisters that why we didn't force you to get it. Right. You know, so, but, uh, you know, it's, it's um, you know, this epidemic has hit, hit everyone hard around the world. And I uh, just hope that we can get it under control and get it stable. Well, I'll tell you this, baby. That's, that's big time, man. And as I said before, as soon as you get everything rolling, I'm there. So a line I need to Pay, pay attention. Keep your eyes open because this is this is gonna get out and it's gonna get rolling, and, and we're gonna make right. sure we be out there support. But I gotta say this: I know you are not just a former player, not just an alum. I know you're a fan. Let's of talk course. a little. Let's talk a little today's Illini basketball. Of course, we're we're, done, we're sitting at nine and four right now. Um, I'll say some some tough losses to some good teams. Oh, what, yeah. what do you see? Um, what when you look at this team? What are, what are some of the things that you see being a former pro, former college player, having been at the pinnacle uh, of this sport? What what do you see when you look at this team? I just I look at these guys and say they they gotta find that uh, one guy that's gonna be the dog for the team. And you know everybody looks at Io because you know he's leader in scoring. And all of that, and he, you know, the dynamic player, unbelievable player. But you need, like, I would love to see Kofi become that dog down there. If Kofi become the dog, he, the big dog, as they call it, oh man, these guys can go. It, it's it's unbelievable how far they can go. Because when he starts, when he plays like he plays, when he's dominating, and you look up and he's got 24 points, 15 rebounds, 14 rebounds four or five blocks, look how exciting that team becomes. Yeah. You open up the outside, the flashing, because everybody is focused on you. You got three guys at least focused on you. So that means you got three other players that should be active, scoring, shooting, getting open, and now you're playing basketball. When they have to work, all that focus become on him, um, Georgie, uh, everybody just have, they, they have great games, especially Iowa. You know, uh, Frazier, and you know, it's just I look at him and say, "Hey, when that when he becomes the monster he already is, oh man, it's, it, uh, Illinois basketball is going to be. It's, I, I love it watching it now, but it's going to be so exciting to see that you know, because I saw him the other night, and I mean, he's what six ten, six eleven, yeah, maybe. and I saw him. Uh, he, he got a, a great offensive rebound, and he just pity patted it up. And it, it hit under the rim, and I'm sitting there, and I'm yelling at myself, I'm like, dunk the damn ball. <laughs> you got a seven-inch weed thing. You're almost seven feet. Nothing should be a layup. And I'm like, well, you know, he, once he gets his awareness where he is, and yeah. that's all he's got to do is get his awareness, uh, he, he, he's going to be a monster. I look forward to watching him play, you know, not only at Illinois, but the next level as well, him and Io and all the other guys that have that opportunity uh, to flourish in the next level, you know, and I, and, and I love it. I love it. Even, you know, I love it when they're, when they're not winning because I love Illinois. And, and I, you know, I see the future and I, I, I see these young guys and they, they, they're going to be excited. You know, you got some freshmen that off the chart, you know, uh, and I, I, I just love it. I just love it, man. It's going to be a big thing for us. But, yeah, you know, I, I, I got to concur with you with you on, you know, Kofi's hasn't been playing very long. 
Mm -hmm. But to see his exactly. growth from last year to this year, I mean, now he got a little left hand, right hand jump hook. Mm -hmm. That drop step has has he's learned how to use his body to get to that drop step. I, I agree with you. I think the one thing that he's still missing, and you know, like I know, that comes with confidence. It comes with age. Is that mean streak? Mm -hmm. He develops a mean streak. He is probably hands down the most dominant player in college oh, basketball because there's nobody that can stop him. By and, far, by yeah. far. And I mean, and he's just just awesome. I mean, what his, this kid can be. The growth of Io is off the charts. You know, one of the things they say, well, he can't shoot. Now he's shooting close to fifty percent. You know. Oh, yeah. well, he can't do this. But yet he continues to make the game look so easy, you mm -hmm. know, when he decides to turn it on. You mentioned the freshman, Andre Cabello, of course, Adam Miller. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, those two kids are probably the two main focus right now. What do you think about Cabello? I call him El Mago, the magician. That's, that's, my, that's my guy, man. As, as I told people when, when the season started, uh, I have a friend out of New York that knows him, have seen him play, and he called me. He said, Kenny, man, wait till you see this young man play. And I remember the first game he gets in, and, you know, you, when, you, when, you, when you see flashes, you be like, oh, dang. And, I mean, this kid, he, he is so elusive, and he always outthinking the defense, and that's what I love. And he's not afraid to get in there because he knows if I bring two guys to me, I know my big man better be here when I drop it off for the dunk. And, yeah. I mean, you can see um, Kofi's eyes open up every time he comes to the basket because he know at the end he's got to be ready, you know. And this, this, this young man is exciting. And uh, I told people before, hey, he, he's going to study and prove and continue to get better as well as Adam. You know, uh, you know we, we got some players on the horizon. And then I, I bet it's not that bad either. You know, you got guys coming in, doing their job, knowing their role, you know. And you bring up the bench. That is another one of the freshmen that I was going to ask you about is Coleman Hawkins. That's the 16-kid oh, yeah. out of California. Well, you know, he, his people are originally from Chicago. Oh, his dad. Yeah. You know, his dad's from Chicago, plays CPS basketball. That, that I, I truly love what that kid is going to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's upside is unbelievable. And, and he's wearing 33, so he ain't got no choice. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the pressure's on him, man. I mean, I, I, I hope they told him, you know, the ramification of wearing that number at Illinois, you know, because not everybody gets to wear that 33, man. You got to look at the list of, of guys that come through there and the success they had wearing that number. Uh, but outside of that, man, I, I agree with you 100%, man. This kid upside is, is going to be unbelievable. Uh, and all it takes is, you know, court time, practice, uh, confidence, you know, and, and the coaching staff, you know, uh, Coach Underwood have, have shown, he, he'll put him in in tough situations, early situations, and he come in and do his job. And you and I know that one or two minutes gets you five. That five gets you ten. You know, you keep going. You just do your job and your minutes don't come, you know. The minutes don't come. And, you know, the, the future of Illinois basketball is bright, I mean. The whole coaching staff, along with Coach Underwood and his staff, they're doing a tremendous job of developing these young men, uh, making them get the confidence in themselves, as well as the team concept. So it's, you know, I, I'd be excited to, to see them play every time. Well, know? got a tough one coming up this weekend, of course, with Ohio State. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I feel good about those matchups. I think we are, and it's in Champaign. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I feel good about that game. What's your thoughts? Well, you know, I feel good about every game Illinois play, I'm going to be honest. And you know, if they come out and do their job, do, you know, as Coach said, do your job and the game will be easy. If they come out and do their job and limit turnovers, you know, um, when, when you have a possession and you scoring on every possession, that puts added pressure on that, on that defense. Yeah. You know, especially if you're getting stops and scoring. Now that team got to work extra hard to get a bucket to try to stop you. And if you keep doing your job, uh, you shouldn't have a problem. You know, take care of – and you know, you know, and I know, you got to take care of business at home. Oh, yeah. big team, that's, that's a tough place to win on the road. So you definitely got to win at home. And you get, and you get 50, uh, like Coach used to tell us, if we win at home and we go 50 uh, 
50 50 on the road, we'll win the comp. You know, and it basically that is that easy and it's laid out. And I feel they um they're they're ready. You know, after the last um, the last game, you know, with Maryland, but Maryland is one of those teams that kind of got our numbers. Uh, uh, but you know, uh, we'll we'll be fine, man. They'll be. I think we'll be fine. I, I agree with you 100. percent Like I tell people, people are asleep on Maryland. Maryland's not a bad team. Maryland, when you man. when you lose your point guard, you know, as they did with Anthony Cowan, and, and you lose mm-hmm. someone like Big Stretch, you know. You have to find your identity and find who you are, and they're finding who they are. I mean, they they, they went up and won, beat Wisconsin. You know, mm-hmm. they, they played a tough game and ended up beating us in Champaign. You know, which yep. are two of the better teams in the Big Ten, meaning Wisconsin yep. and Illinois, of course. That team is good. I had someone tell me they were like, "Yeah, that's going to be a bad loss for Illinois." I said, "No, it's not, because they're going to be in the tournament." I was like, "That's a tournament team they lost to." <laughs> Exactly. Now, the only thing we have to learn, and I want to see if you agree with me on this, and I think you will, is those guys have to understand they have a target on their back. Mm-hmm. And everybody is going to come out and give them their absolute best every night. But this is one of the 10 things, you know, when you have to cut your season short, you, you don't have fans in the stands, you, you mm-hmm. got all this stuff going on with COVID. It's a growth process. Yep. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You're right. And, you know, they, um, you know, you, 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 you learn. And I mean, you know, you always want to say, man, how would it feel to not play with fans? And these young people are finding out about it. You know, you got your, you got your coaching staff, you got your bench, your managers, your trainers, your, uh, your weight personnel, all of these people, that's the only energy you got. So when you when I look at the game and I see the bench over there is going off and they're having fun and um, you know that, that's all you got you know that's basically you're playing a pickup game with officials you know because there's no fan there so it's it's up to you to bring you got to bring your own energy your own excitement you got to create the energy create excitement and uh, just go out and play and, and knowing that it's a 40 minute game. Um, and there's no fan there, just your coaching staff and, and you, you know, the personnel people. So, uh, but, you know, like you said, you, you're growing, you're learning, you're understanding, and, you know, you still have a job to do. Yeah, You still have to come out and perform. You know, exactly. you do it all. Exactly. Yeah. And they'll get there. So what I'm going to do, KB, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go. I'm going to tell you the first and foremost, man, I, I appreciate you so much coming on and spending time with myself and with the Lion Eye Nation, of course. I'm going to give you the mic here for a minute, man. You you get to say whatever you want to Align Our Nation, bro. The, the stage is yours. Well, Align Our Nation, I have I always appreciated you guys over 30 some years and even today. Uh, you are by far the best fans in the world. Uh, there's nowhere I haven't traveled that I've ran into Align Our Fans Israel, Japan, uh, Argentina, Philippines. We are all over, and you know, uh, our people speak louder. So let's continue to stick together. Let's continue to support and um, uh, align that for life. There you go, baby. Cannot be said better than that. This is your man Dion Thomas, the man in the middle. And I want to say thank you to all of you that are out listening today, that have come to join myself and Mister Flight Thirty Three, Kenny Battle. As we discuss Illinois basketball past and present, don't forget, go on to the Field of 68 um, Fit Network and subscribe. But also hit subscribe for Champagne on Ice, and you can find us both on Apple Podcasts as well as Spotify. So appreciate your Lion Eye Nation. Peace, love, and hair grease.